The music industry is today known as a major provider and contributor to youth empowerment and employment. Its current value is not just known as a provider of food for the soul, it is also a provider of food for the pocket. Hello and welcome to the entertainment segment of iBrand Daybreak. My name is Omobolan Le Adeshi. Today on the show, I've got two guests in the house. I have with me Aliyu Mahmood, a rapper and music artist manager. Good morning to you, Aliyu. Good morning. I also have right here Hak, who is a rap artist and a singer. Hello, Hak. Hi, good morning. <laughs> Your name, actually, maybe I should start with that. Hak. Sounds like a hacker <laughs> or something. No, the full name is Hineous. actually Abdul Hak. Okay. It's an Islamic name, like an Arabic name. Uh, um, and it means the truth. So your stage name is Hak, just yeah. to make it funky. Yeah, just uh, interesting. Okay, so let me come to you as a music artist manager, Leo. What does it entail? What does it mean to be a music artist manager? Um, actually, it's uh, all about um, getting to see what other people can see. I'm an can't individual. see or can't see? Can't see. Okay. Uh, because uh, uh, you, you, you're actually dealing with um, the fact you have to nurture and uh, talent sometimes it's not really the basic thing you need from an individual i personally feel discipline is the mm. basic uh, quality you need to have and uh, it takes a while to actually know who is disciplined and who is not mm. so and, so uh, that is what you look out for as a yes, music artist yeah, manager. even the fact that uh, naturally we're dealing with talented people naturally naturally so uh, I, I, I tend to go for discipline, really, to um, search for discipline, qualities, when I'm actually dealing with individuals and um, the zeal. Mm. That's, that's the second uh, quality as well, because you need to have... No, no you, you are going into qualities now. I want to know what it takes, like, what I think you look into as a manager to say, okay, this is what I want to do, or this is what it takes to be a music artist manager. Yeah, you know, um, as I said, basically, like, um, the fact that I'm actually into uh, managing um, artists, uh, definitely they have to be talented. So they have the talent already, really. But sometimes um, in this business, um, talent don't really um, take you far. What takes you far is um, discipline, hard work, uh, dedication. Okay, you're still talking about the artists, but I'll just let you be. Maybe you think about it. I'm saying look in, looking at yourself as a music artist manager. Sure. Okay, let me come to Hack. Hack, you were telling yeah. me just before the show that you've been doing this for 10 years. Yeah. Tell us, how has the journey been? Yeah, the journey has been great. Like, And I feel it was kind of easy for me to blend in because right from time i've always been surrounded with music mm. and the whole thing became serious. when you say surrounded with music how do you mean your family like members family are members musically are inclined musically inclined they are lovers of music and i have cousins that are into music stuff like that so it actually became serious when i started working in a studio in my neighborhood okay so i started mu um, music production that is beat production so then i started rapping and singing so do you also write? Do you write your songs? Yeah, I write my songs. So do, have you experienced, so I know that for writers, there are times when they experience this writer's block when nothing is just coming, there is no inspiration. Do you experience that? Yeah, like I feel music is actually a mood. It gets like what you are feeling at the moment. And sometimes it's just like fiction, like your idea. Mm. Do you get inspired yeah. by things that happen in the country? Yeah, I get inspired or things, by that things that happen like my personal life um things that happen in my environment and ideas too you do afro beats and rap why yeah. did you choose that niche i do afro fusion like afro pop i also i rap and i do dance hall like i do do you dance dance hall dance hall music dance yeah hall i'm music. saying you do but do you dance because you yeah, know i was a dancer at some point <laughs> ali why are you laughing uh, <laughs> i guess it was done a lot really uh actually from yeah. the look of things so ali being a, um, an artist manager so you know sometimes he just talked about the writer's block i would come back to him to ask mm -hmm. how he manages that but as a manager, there should be some things you can do to help your artists to overcome the writer's block. For instance, for writers, sometimes they just maybe take a walk, take a shower, sleep. Do, what are the things you do to help? Uh, yeah, like um, 
just as she just said, we we, we actually do that as well. Uh, we encourage our artists to like uh, feel free, really catch the vibe, and uh, it's okay. And um, uh, but I I try my possible best not to let uh, them understand uh, or probably um, feel the need to um, take some stance, really. Mm. Okay, uh, because if you it, because that is what we see out there, yes, right? Uh, it, these days, yes, it's either you actually get it or you don't get it, really, mm. as they say in the street, really. So, um, if, you, if you're talented enough, you don't really need um, any substance to actually like uh, uh, make you. Uh, so, uh, what do you think is responsible for this major substance abuse in the music industry? Because even uh, you see some music artists encouraging promoting substance abuse in their songs. Uh, well, um, it's just, um, I, I feel personally, it's just, um, uh, let me say, uh, uh, peer pressure. So I just feel so like, uh, and the fact that people actually give um, this uh, different um, substance um, power, um, like the mental state is like, if you don't take this stuff, you can't actually do this. Or you, mm. need, or you actually see a very good artist um, go into the system and uh, the next thing, um, uh, peer pressure or probably like the labels or probably like managers are actually letting them know that you can actually get more better if you actually do this stuff so hmm. i personally my own own space i try my possible best to let my artists understand that you 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 actually own yourself you hmm. own your, your 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 talent you own what you think of and uh, yeah don't don't let anything use you you actually have to use it really. interesting so how do you overcome the writers or should i say singers block <laughs> singer's block oh. it's also the writer's block actually because you write your songs yeah like from what i said like it depends on your mood and what you are feeling at the moment yeah i'm saying when nothing is coming you want to write a song no no inspiration no creativity nothing how do you overcome it mm, i'll just rest my head and sometimes i can actually go to the club you know i'll probably like um uh, you just you know catch by really like mm. um, go out um, um, you, you get um, listening to uh, boring conversations and um, <laughs> and all oh, really boring conversations yeah. indeed okay so um hack if valentine's you know valentine's day is close and you want to serenade a girl say uh maybe she's not even your girlfriend maybe somebody just uh told you a friend just calls you and says okay i want to serenade my girl on valentine's day let's go very early in the morning because we did a lot of that back then on campus i saw it no i didn't do it. i saw it happen <laughs> <laughs> so what what aspect of your music because i know you do a lot of you know different genre genre of music what genre or aspect would you go for um Let's see, I'll do like a bit of both. I can rap and sing, depending on the texture of the beat. Mm. Yeah. The beat, what beat? The beat. I'm talking what about early like in the morning early when. Early in the morning. Yeah, I can decide to do a, like a short verse, like a rap. You do a rap? Yeah. Okay. Just get yourself ready because you know Valentine's close and you might just be <laughs> you might just be doing a lot of that. Well, uh, let's look at this issue we see between artists and managers, artists and record labels. We saw the most recent one between Portable and uh, Kubagidi. Uh, what do you think is responsible for that? Uh, well, um, it's actually like a uh, it's actually a two way um, street really because um, at the end of the day, it takes two to have disagreements. Okay, you can't have this agreement with yourself, really. It takes two, so it's actually um, it's normal. Uh, but uh, but we see it happen a lot yes. these days. A but lot. the issue is this: uh, the issue around this um, disagreement is the fact that somebody actually changes mm. or probably things breach of contract. Yes. So, uh, for example, now like the um, scenario you just painted, glaring, you should understand that. Uh, the fact that it's actually very difficult to fine tune between business and um, friendship mm. or help when so, money enters yes the story because uh, changes. that's why it's actually very good to actually um um be specific are you helping this person or is it business uh -huh. okay so for example and um for for an artist um the person needs to uh, be educated really 
not I'm not talking about having a BS here or, mm. or, or stuff. Just 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 know what you Be want. Enlightened. Yeah, know what you want and, and, and know what you don't want really. Mm. And uh, even if you don't really know how to like uh, read the whole long um, pages uh, with your contract, ask for help. Mm. So uh, we we're moving in a space where we are actually very well aware. So I I I, I feel uh, if you actually sign the deal, you should actually go through the deal. Mm. So now, that's it. Yes, Hack, I, I'm coming to you now. Okay. Uh, what are some of the challenges you faced as an upcoming music artist? Yeah, like the basically, I think it's getting that platform, that big platform, mm. to like for the audience to listen to what we actually do. Are you shy? Are you? Yeah. <laughs> But you, you're dealing with something you're dealing with, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, so um, when you, do you see that as a challenge, being yeah, shy? I see that being shy? Yeah. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? Yeah. Ali, you? Well, um, I don't think so as well because he's actually a shy person, but uh, when he time to actually turn up really on stage, he Yeah, I know people like all, that. So. Ordinarily, when it comes to talking, they might be... Yeah. Uh, drawn back, withdrawn, yeah. but when it comes to performing, singing, and yeah. all that, you see their true color. Yeah. Mm. Okay, interesting. Okay, so let's uh, look at the ways by which you've been able to break through that, you know, that uh, hurdle of you not, you know, a lot of people would rather go for the big names other than come for someone who is just up and coming. How have you been able to deal with that hurdle? So it comes again. Have you been able to deal with the hurdle of you not getting recognition out there as an up and coming artist? Um, what I do, I just keep on doing my thing and improving myself and try to meet the standard. Mm. And if I can actually um, add to that, um, you know, we, we, we take every show we have, like the last and the first show. So mm, we so give, you give you your best. Yeah. So, and. Um, and trust me, uh, he has a lot of best to give, mm. really. Okay, so uh, there's a statistics I'm seeing here that says that, uh, it's by Statista actually, it says that the music sector's revenue grew from 26 million US dollars in 2014 to 34 million dollars in 2018. And then this figure, according to the research projection by Statista, is expected to grow to 44 million dollars that's by 2023 that's just next year what do you think is responsible for this rapid growth we see in the music industry well um first of all social media and um we and uh, we actually seen a lot of investment and um the fact that everybody actually knows that if whiskey can do it i can do it so there's there, there's a there's a belief um system it's actually far it's far easier to tell somebody you can be you can be a president than uh, telling a kid you can be a superhero. Mm. Probably like a Spider-Man or something. You, <laughs> like, because we've not seen any. Mm. But if you actually tell somebody you can be the next Whiskey, the next Davido, and hopefully the next Mr. Hack, and uh, yeah, so the, the belief system is there. And um, an average boy in um, Odre Legba or in Agege, in Ikorodu, can actually um, see the, the movement of someone like Zlatan. Mm from the streets and um, he is where he is today or even portable really um, I think I, I actually saw an old video of portable um, during the NSAS um, movement and, uh, and right now he's, he's, he's in Kenya chilling mm -hmm. so just, just, just look at what that would do for his clique so apparently the music industry is now really contributing to Nigeria's revenue. Yes. Uh, and it looks like things, the narrative has totally changed. Yeah. You know, back then it wasn't seen as a career path. Of course. A lot of parents would not want their children to go into music. Yeah. Saying that it, 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 it was just seen as a hobby. Yeah. What do you think changed? Yeah, uh, what, what changed was um, the fact that we had pioneers really that, that stick to their guns and um, 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 the fact that people actually laughed at them. Um, the light of Two Face that actually went from um, from having a a, a, a small section um, in radio stations to to selling out shows, uh, giving us the first uh, platform really uh, um, with African Queen. Mm. Okay, we I know kids really these days may think of whiskey and um, the fact they brought excess actually uh, took us to the world. Like people like Two Face have they've actually done did that really and um, Afrobeats will go 
um, higher mm. each year, each day, because of the fact that we have a lot of talent. And um, you made um, um, some certain um, um, points regarding to the fact that people actually see uh, uh, being music. A music as a career goal. And um, these days, parents are actually accepting the fact that they are... Um, or even encouraging their, their kids to actually like uh, go into music is it's because of um, artists like Whiskey as well, okay. And as well, personally, I feel um, there's a bridge um, gap that 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 has been um, fixed between the poor and the rich in Nigeria. How do you mean? Okay, uh, just for just for example, uh, the, the, the 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 super uh, wealthy people can actually uh, see the need to actually relate to to a hot artist, if I, if I can say, okay, you, you, like now you see people like um, Dangote having, um, trying to settle a dispute between P Square and, mm. uh, and his brother, uh, the, the, the P Square brothers. Mm. So, you know, um, you see the fact that like uh, Anatodela is actually dancing to uh, an upcoming artist uh, um, um, song and um, he invites the artist over. Without music, um, that will never have really happened because mm. the only time we see these politicians are probably like uh, probably doing election, but now you see them coming to the, sh the shows really mm -hmm. because they know that's how, where they can actually capture the youth. So uh, I feel music is that bridge really. Um, Bridging the gap between the wealthy and yes. the poor. And, yeah. Well, let me come to hack. Now you see a lot of music artists come and say, oh, well, I dropped out from school. I dropped out from school. Uh, you just mentioned two phase who, of course, I've said this several times that just because they say I'm not finished school, you know, and all of that. <laughs> I know you are a graduate. Yeah. Uh, what did you call the course again? IMT? Yeah, I studied IMT. Yeah, the full. Media technology. Okay, so what do you think is the relationship between being educated, you know, having that, bagging that certificate, and music? I feel the education is like kind of like an exposure to for you as a person. So I that is what I feel. Okay, uh, uh, let me throw the same question. To yeah, you, you know, um, um, regarding to education, I I used to like say this. Um, some although most growing up really like we had a, a vibe like when you finish school you try and get a job. Um, that's not really why education is uh, uh, given to you, or probably you, you go seek for knowledge. It's actually um, um, develop your mind. Okay, so you'll be at the interact, yes, network. yeah. So uh, whatever you choose to do after school. Trust me, you you be the best at it mm. compared to somebody that did not have that basic um, knowledge. You ask the right questions, and um, that's why you see uh, most people that have issues with their contracts. They didn't ask the right questions before they actually signed. Mm. But once you're educated, this can actually uh, pave way for you to actually know what what is not and what it is really. Mm. So let's talk about how to push out positivity as against drug, babes, alcohol. How can we change the narrative? You, as a music artist manager, you, as a music artist, you have a huge role to play in that area. How can we change the narrative? Um, uh, I feel it's actually not the artist, really, that will change the narrative. Who will? The people. Because art actually imitates life. So, for example, like, uh, just the other day, uh, I noticed, yes, we have moral so rights. Saying, hold on. So you're saying if the people are doing wrong things, then the artist should also no. push out we, the wrong no, that's, information. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm saying if for us to actually change these social vices, we need to do it where these uh, um, social vices actually happen. That is the society. That I think that's where government comes in. So um, it's it's actually just um, pointing the air. If you tell an average artist not to sing about drugs, girls alcohol or yeah, even yeah, about yeah. crime it's not just about because not singing, it sells. it's about not pushing out the wrong information not promoting I drug abuse I not promoting rape I and objectifying no, no, women no, no 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 nobody actually promotes rape really like an average artist can't promote rape but yeah i'm saying they don't have to maybe promote it in black and white but you see girls, but when you objectify yeah. women you are promoting indirectly but promoting i want to rape. ask you a question too as well but you notice in the music video right when Uncle, they're actually uh, making these girls look like a sex uh, object, right? Who are the girls dancing? A female too, is it? So it's not, it's not, it's not just the artist, really. It's, it's a community. But we can start from somewhere. We have to start. You somewhere. can't start. You can't start from the top. You have to start from the bottom. That's where the 
the community actually comes in. So when the when the people, because at the end of the day, as an artist, I get my inspiration from the streets. If the street don't actually accept this, where will I get my yeah, inspiration I, from? Yeah, I get my inspiration from the street, but I also want to push out the, the right message. Yes, so I see that a lot of people are abusing drugs and are objectifying women and are doing all sorts of social vices that yeah. should stop. And I think, okay, how can I change this? How can I uh, let, for instance, look at Fowles. He has done several songs in that regard where he talks about how uh, a woman shouldn't be raped, a woman shouldn't be, you know, a lot of songs like that. Now, can I ask you a question as well? Yeah. Go check the script. Although you are the one that would answer the question. Go, 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 go check out the streams of all these um, social... Um, social so um, it's about the money. Um, technically, like, I'm trying to be practical here. Mm. If we really want to, like, solve these issues... We'll take it down to the street, really. All right, let's not drag that <laughs> any further. <laughs> it's time to get practical. So I, I would like, maybe it would be both of you or Hack himself to drop us some bars. Definitely Hack will do that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, heavenly love with the spice and the ginger. Melanin poppy me the heart of a nigga. Malo chick, a name na Adiza. It's the domino, say na only me the pizza. It's okay. <laughs> that was great. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So let's wrap up the show. Thank you so much. It's been a very interesting time, actually. I've had fun with uh, Aliyu, Aliyu Mahmood, a rapper and music artist manager. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Me. And also with Hack, a rapper artist and music artist. Thank you so much for coming on iBrand Daybreak. All right, that's it for the entertainment segment of Vibrant Day Break. My name is Mobolan Le Adeshi, wishing you a fantastic weekend. Bye for now. <laughs>